Whether you're booking a flight or using a credit card, nearly everyone has used a mainframe computer at one point or another. These giant computers play a central role in the daily operations of many large companies. In fact, 71% of Fortune 500 companies use them. It's so deeply ingrained in the process, in the business process. It's the center point of everything we do. The fact that people think mainframes are dead don't understand what's really behind the scenes. There are clients out there with mainframes that they've had them 30 years and they've never shut them off. The mainframe's not going to go away. A 2020 Forrester study surveyed more than 260 businesses and IT leaders and found that a majority believe the mainframe is a long-term strategic platform. Everybody thinks that it's old. It's not the cool thing on the block to, to be working on. These mainframes are terribly outdated, running software that's 30 to even 40 years old. When you have these and your business is built around them, that's your infrastructure. Those infrastructures were built from the knowledge of people that aren't around anymore. And the number of mainframe skilled workers are in short supply. A majority of COBOL programmers are in the later years of their careers, and millions have retired from the workforce. I remember I was on this one contract and they had a uh, COBOL developer uh, working there and he was getting up there in age. So we'd frequently find him falling asleep at his cube because he's in his 80s. More and more jobs are hiring for modern languages like Python and Ruby. At the same time, jobs for mainframe languages like COBOL are diminishing. Professor Bob Lovelace teaches legacy IT systems at the University of Missouri and is seeing this firsthand in his classroom. There's not a lot of people who, who take these programs. We may have 10 to 12 people a year take the course, maybe in a high year of 20 or 25. So there's just not a lot of throughput. And the software source code is typically written in languages like COBOL, Natural, Assembly, and others. These languages produce verbose scripting, sometimes requiring thousands of lines of code that today's languages can achieve in just 10 or 20 lines of code. With all these reasons to put mainframes in the past, why do companies stay on the mainframe? So my former employer was trying to get off of their mainframe application for 10 years or more. And even the conversation became impossible because it would always go down this rabbit hole of the complexities of, of the system. When getting off the mainframe, companies have to consider two main drivers, the cost of migrating and the duration of the solution. That is, how long will the solution last? There are at least four common mainframe modernization methods, wrap, convert, rewrite, and lift and shift. Let's start with the wrap. Wrapping the mainframe means to buy or build other software that sits next to or around the mainframe. These wrappers allow newer programs on the outside to use modern technology, and it translates that into a compatible protocol that the older technology can handle. There are some products out there to make this easier, but these software licenses can cost millions of dollars each year. Now, one of the issues with wrapping a mainframe that we've encountered is this can be a painful method for any business. Trying to integrate these softwares all in a bundle and the cost can be absolutely exponential. Wrapping is a temporary solution. At some point, the support for both the mainframe software and the wrapper software will be discontinued, leaving companies in a bad position. Then we have the option to convert. Converting the mainframe puts all of the code through a special software system that transforms the old mainframe code into new modern languages like c -sharp, Python, or Java. This sounds like a perfect solution, but if the code that these converters create is buggy, that means another programmer has to go through and fix it, which could be millions of lines of code taking literally years to complete. Converting code is costly, ugly, buggy, but more often than not, it's a starting point. So converters go here, expensive, and require additional labor, and yet they would be a long-term solution. 
Then we have a full rewrite. The rewrite is when you send out analysts or developers to go and learn everything they can about your mainframe software and then explain it, usually in flowcharts, diagrams, and requirement documents. So you're taking the data from the mainframe and you're moving it to a new technology. So in many cases, you have to rewrite your old software and then keep that crosstalk going between the mainframe and the new database so that all the data is synchronized. Then programmers will take those materials and use them to create new software that did everything the old system did, but using modern languages and on modern hardware. Developers love rewrites, but it's risky because they might miss something. And that means they create bugs and lose valuable lessons that were learned years ago in the old code. Anytime you add the human element back in, you open yourself up to bugs or other issues. For an example, if you took some of these unemployment systems, you might be five, six years down the road before they're, they're viable systems, fully tested and vetted. So rewrite is the most expensive, most risky, and yet would be the ultimate long-term solution. Then we have the lift and shift. This is where you take all the old mainframe source code and copy and paste it from the old hardware and into the cloud. The old code is compiled in an emulator, which is a virtual application that runs the same old code, but in a new way. And companies have to keep changing that code all the time, adding new features and fixing bugs. Yes, you absolutely solve one of your problems. You move that code into the cloud but you're still really using old COBOL language. Eventually, all this is gonna do is impact the business. Then you're back to square one. Not all software likes to be virtualized. You know, older versions of SQL Server, for example, are, were, were kind of notorious for that. It wouldn't run well uh, as soon as you put it on a virtual machine. So lift and shift is cheap and fast, but keeps the old code around and doesn't give us that long-term solution we need to get rid of the old code. With newer technology and various ways to get off the mainframe, it'll be interesting to see if mainframes are still among us decades from now.